This is a video demonstration of the deep version of the GoPro housing for GoPro 9, 10, and 11. This particular housing is designed to withstand water pressures up to two kilometers. And we also have option for four kilometer and six kilometer pressure rating. The housing features a vacuum valve, leak detection system, latches to easily open and close the, the housing, a sapphire crystal uh, front, front lens, and anodized aluminum body. It also features zinc anodes to prevent corrosion of the housing for prolonged deployment. We supply this housing with a variety of uh, different accessories, such as external power supplies, uh, subsea connectors, vacuum pump, electronic vacuum pump, dual battery plate for providing power to the GoPro for extended period of time. Moreover, this housing is completely customizable and we're able to custom manufacture this housing for the customer's need. The latches have ability to lock so that the, the housing cannot be accidentally opened. We also have another option to add nitrogen to the to the housing to increase its depth rating that's another option that's available the front element is coated with uh, broadband anti-reflective coating to uh, preserve the optical quality of the gopro with this housing you're able to capture subsea images that are very high resolution for a fraction of the cost that you would have to pay for if you get a dedicated subsea camera system. We're going to demonstrate the operation of this particular housing. When you first receive the housing, you may notice that it's quite easy to take about the housing because there's no vacuum uh, pressure inside the housing. Therefore, it's easy to pry the two halves um, two halves apart and open up the housing. But as you start to use the housing itself, you may realize that because of the vacuum that gets created uh, from the leak detection system, uh, it's uh, a little bit difficult to, to open up the housing. So we're gonna demonstrate this uh, vacuum pressure and how you can open up the housing that way. The first thing we need to do is we need to release the pressure inside the housing. So we can do that by opening up the vacuum valve. This particular vacuum valve could be replaced with a nitrogen valve. And what the nitrogen allows you to do is increase the depth rating of this housing beyond the uh, two kilometer depth rating that we have. Uh, currently we have uh, a chamber that can take the, uh, take the housing down to a, a depth of 2.4 kilometers. However, we believe that this particular housing can withstand a lot higher pressures and we're developing another hydrostatic chamber to demonstrate this. But for now, this housing itself is rated for two kilometers. And in order to increase that depth rating, we can pre-charge the housing with nitrogen to increase its depth rating. Uh, but in this particular case, this housing is supplied with a vacuum valve. In order to open up the housing, we need to release the vacuum. And to do so, we have to open up the valve. And the way we open up the valve is there's a, a little silicone seal here that we have to pull back. And as we pull back, we allow air to go inside the housing. Now, when you start to open up the latches, 
you may realize that it's a little bit difficult to pry open the two housing. And the reason for that is because as you try to pry open the housing, the seal is so good that it's creating a vacuum and the atmospheric pressure is holding the two halves together. So what we have to do is allow air into the housing and at the same time pry the housing open. And to do this, we use two fingers like this to push the, the housing apart. And as you can see, while doing that, we let some air into the housing and we keep doing that until the two halves come apart. You may notice that this particular housing has two O-ring seals. One is a radial and one is an axial. The two O-ring seals allow you to have dual protection. This particular housing um, has, this particular half of the housing has a, a dovetail groove that holds the O-ring together. And uh, all you have to do is make sure that this O-ring is clean before you close up the housing. You want to run your finger on the on the o-ring and make sure there's no dust or debris or hair or anything like that that could allow water to get into the housing. The o-ring for this portion of the housing is on this face here and this is a piston type seal and you also want to make sure that there is no um, residue, de dust or debris on this o-ring. You always want to make sure that this o-ring is lubricated so that the, the two halves can slide together easily. This half of the housing contains the leak detection circuit. This leak detection circuit allows you to monitor the pressure inside the housing. With the vacuum valve and a vacuum pump, such as this one, this one is a hand pump. We also have an electric vacuum pump. This electric vacuum pump and the hand pump can al allow you to uh, form a vacuum inside the housing and you let the housing sit for a while and you measure the pressure inside the housing. If it maintains a vacuum, it means that the seals are working properly and there shouldn't be any leak and you can deploy the housing for the application that you want. The first time you receive the, the housing, you may notice that there is a, a little uh, protection tab here that is uh, preventing the battery from um, short circuiting you can just simply pull that out and uh, that would allow you to operate the leak detection circuit the leak detection circuit uh, on this housing works with a, an ios app or by itself Before using the battery plate, uh, you want to test the voltage to make sure that the uh, voltage converter on the battery plate is functioning properly. To do so, uh, we have a little uh, device here that would allow us to measure the USB-C voltage while also making sure that the GoPro is connected to see if there is any voltage drop. We insert the batteries. Then we attach the, uh, the device that allows us to measure the bus voltage. And we turn on the uh, voltmeter and as we can see here the voltage is reading 5.1 volt which is quite good and we can also attach the GoPro 
to see what sort of a voltage drop we get from the circuit. As we attach the uh, GoPro, the voltage drops to around 5.6 volt. And if we turn on the GoPro, the voltage drops further. And uh, we wanna make sure that the voltage never drops below uh, 4.9 volt or higher than 5.1 uh, volt. That just tells us that the, the circuit is working properly and there's no fault in the circuit that could damage the GoPro. The best way to assemble the fixture plate into the housing is to allow the uh, the front half of the housing to stand flat this way against the surface. You always want to make sure that you're working in a clean environment with a, a surface does, that would not damage the, uh, the housing. You want to have a nice rubber mat um, that allows you to work and, uh, and not scratch the housing or um, is dirty that would uh, cause the O-rings to be contaminated. You simply slide the fixture plate onto the uh, pins. There's two pins here, and there is a there is a clearance hole that the uh, dowel pins slide on, and that allows the fixture plate to stay very securely inside the housing without moving. Once that's done. You can go ahead and put on the thumb screw. Now we're ready to seal the housing. Before we seal the housing, we want to remove this uh, battery protection tab, just like that. You may hear a clicking sound, and that clicking sound tells you that the device is in sleep mode and it's ready to be engaged. If you hear a continuous clicking sound from the buzzer, that indicates that the circuit is running low on battery and the battery needs to be changed. To turn on the circuit, you simply click on this uh, tactile switch here. And what that does is turns on this blinking green LED. We're going to seal up the housing without using the leak detection app. To seal up the housing, you may notice that there is a there's a clearance hole here that mates with a, a dowel pin on this side of the housing, right here. Without aligning those, you cannot close the housing. Simply align that, engage the uh, the latches, and close the housing. At this point, we're going to open up the valve and pull a vacuum. As you pull the vacuum on the housing, you may realize that the light is now changing to orange. That indicates that partial vacuum is realized. And as you pull more air from the housing, that green or that orange flashing light will turn into a solid green. And after it's solid green, it will now go into a partially sleep mode. And what that means is that the circuit goes into sleep mode, wakes up uh, one second and measures the pressure inside the housing. And if that pressure is dropping, it would essentially uh, signal an alarm 
and uh, tell the operator that the housing is not sealing. You can now let the housing sit for up to an hour and just monitor it, make sure that it's not leaking. And if it's still blinking solid green, I mean, uh, if it's blink blinking flash flashing green like this, it means that it's holding uh, vacuum pressure and it's not leaking. For using the iOS app with the leak detection device, you want to go into the, the Apple Store and download the iOS app and uh, install it onto your mobile device. Once the app is open, uh, if it's for the first time you're installing the app, you may get a, a permission request to access the uh, Bluetooth. And this device actually works with the uh, low energy Bluetooth. So you wanna enable that. While the app is open, you want to reach in and turn on the leak detection circuit. Once the leak detection circuit is on, you may notice that the uh, green light is blinking and a device is found on the, uh, the app. If the device is not found, make sure that you completely close the app and restart it while the uh, leak detection circuit is on. You may have to do this multiple times for the uh, leak detection uh, circuit to be found. We connect to the app. And as you can see, the app is showing us the pressure inside the housing in millibars and the temperature. There's various settings here, uh, but for this housing, we recommend not to change any of these, any of these settings here and just uh, use, it, use it with the default settings. So now we're gonna seal up the housing while the app is connected. Remember that there is a, a dowel pin and a hole that needs to be aligned on the bottom of the housing. As we start to pull vacuum on the housing using the hand pump, or the electric pump. You can see the pressure on the app will drop. And we want to drop the pressure inside the housing to about 700 millibars or below 700 millibars. It doesn't take too much effort to achieve a vacuum. Uh, the app itself will actually tell you that there's a full vacuum. You can see here, it says full vacuum. Right now it's maintaining a pressure at 654 millibars. We're going to put the cap onto the, uh, the valve. That may uh, cause the pressure to spike a little bit, but that's because we're tightening up the, uh, the valve cap. And now we can let the housing sit and monitor the pressure inside. If the housing is at a constant temperature and it's not exposed to any heat or any, uh, anything that would cool it, um, the pressure should remain the same. We can see here right now it's maintaining a pressure at 654 millibars. Once we're satisfied that there's no leak from the housing, which means that this number does not change uh, over a certain period of time. If you monitor it for about 10 minutes, it should give you a really good indication that the housing is maintaining um, vacuum pressure and it's not gonna leak. 
At this point, uh, I'm just gonna demonstrate some things about the, uh, some features of the app. Um, as we release the pressure from the valve, I'm going to release the pressure a little bit. You can see as I actually open the, the valve cap, um, the, uh, the pressure fluctuated a little bit. This, uh, this sensor, pressure sensor inside the circuit is very sensitive. It measures down to uh, 0.1 of a millibar. So you can see now if it's lost some pressure because I just removed the cap. But I can allow some more pressure inside. And you can see the pressure climbing up. If I allow too much pressure in, it will alarm out. But I'm just allowing a little bit of pressure in. As long as it's not about above uh, 700 millibar, it will not alarm out. But we can just leave it there at 687 millibars. And you can see it's maintaining the pressure. And as I close the cap, may fluctuate a little bit because I'm just uh, closing the cap and that causes pressure fluctuation. But as you let it sit in this uh, form, it should not uh, lose pressure. It's fluctuating right now between uh, 688 and 687, but it's not, it's not moving down or up. So it's maintaining pressure. Once we're ready to go diving, we can disconnect from the app. Disconnecting the, from the app allows the circuit to go into sleep mode and it wakes up and monitors for the leak, but it's conserving power. When it's connected to the Bluetooth device, such as a, an iPhone or an iPad, it's consuming more energy, so it's using more of the battery. So we're gonna disconnect. And when we disconnect, you can see the green blink blinking light. It means that the, the housing is okay. It's in a sleep, partially sleep mode and it's measuring the uh, pressure inside the, the housing. And if the pressure drops, it would alarm out. Just like when, just like now we're gonna demonstrate that it's gonna alarm out once we release the pressure. Well, I hope you found this uh, demonstration video helpful and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions regarding this particular housing or if you like us to design and manufacture a custom housing for your camera, uh, please uh, contact us on our website and we'd be more than happy to help you with your application.